All right. Good day, my friends. Uh, welcome. I'm uh, going to be doing another video demonstration for you guys as we are uh, on lockdown again, not just because of COVID, but now because we're locked in with snow. Uh, it looks like it just keeps on snowing. All right. So today I'm going to be introducing you to color theory. I wish I was introducing it together uh, in person. That would be the best. But hopefully you'll get enough out of this that when we return on Wednesday or Thursday, we can then move forward with this project. So I'm going to introduce you to two color systems or maybe even three uh, and also a, a simple little project, day project. And that's called analogous color ring project, which you see on the right hand side. So the major the color system that we often deal with and what you've dealt with is RYB red, yellow, blue. And those are the primary colors. So you have red at the top, blue over here, and yellow over here. Now, directly across from each one of these is a secondary color. So we have directly across from red is green, which is a secondary color. Directly across from yellow is purple, another secondary color. And then directly across from blue is orange. So we have RGB, or I'm sorry, R ye red, yellow, blue as primary colors, and orange, green, and violet as secondary colors. I also want to point out what we call analogous colors. So if we have a yellow here, the colors that are to its right and left are called analogous colors. They're kind of families of colors. So you have yellow, orange, and orange, and then you have green. Uh, our yellow, green, and and green would be analogous to uh, yellow. To blue, analogous to it would be blue, green, and green. And purple, violet, or blue, violet, and violet. And the same thing with red. So you have the uh, analogous to reds would be the family of reds would be red, orange, and orange, and red, violet, and violet. And I'm going to go into that a little bit further in, in the... Uh, in the presentation. All right. Um, so let's skip here. So for this assignment, you're going to follow the video demonstration. There's going to be a video set up here on this page as well. And you're going to create this analogous uh, color ring uh, using one of the color swatches you've received in your, your kit. And we're going to show you a quick little demo uh, for that. And what you're going to do, so what you're doing is creating a color ring, analogous color ring. You're going to use a color swatch following instructions and demo. You're going to draw a circular type ribbon of triangles, not unlike what we did if you took my color, uh, if you took my drawing class uh, in tessellations. We drew these tessellations out of triangles. And then you're going to paint within the triangles analogous colors and grays and whites and blacks as well. And this is basically to introduce you to the basics of color theory. And everything that we do in in painting will always be drawing off of color theory. So like I told you, we have two color systems. We're familiar with the RYB, the red, yellow, and blue primaries. And when you mix them, get orange, purple, and green. And then when you mix all of the colors together, you get black. And those are what we call an additive system. So when... Um, when light reflects off a surface, that surface absorbs all these wavelengths of color, except for the one that reflects off of it. So it absorbs those colors. Um, the RGB is about pure light. You use them in screens and video and, and stuff like that are, are controlled by RGB. And the primary colors there are red, green, and blue. And the secondary colors is yellow, purple, or what we call fuchsia, or magenta, and cyan uh, are the prime, our secondary colors. And then when you mix all those colors together, you get white, very different than uh, reflective colors. Uh, there's another color system called CYMK that you're often using. That's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And that is a color system you use to print. Your printer or you send things to print is CYMK. Uh, so in terms of the color spectrum, your eye can see quite a few millions of colors, RGB and CYMK and 
I and R, Y, B are subsets. So they, they aren't as uh, strong as the co colors that we can actually see with our eyes. What's really significant about our eyes, and this is all about how we see color, is that your eyeballs are literally parts of your brain. They're not connected to your brain. They're parts of your brain that actually stick out of your skull. And so when somebody says you can uh, see somebody's soul or you can tell if they're lying, it's there's a lot of truth to that. Um, your eyes do tell a lot. Now, the color system, the color spectrum, or is really what we as humans can see is the visual spectrum. And it's a little slice of the entire what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, now we're into physics, and we're literally, as artists, dealing with this little sliver part of the of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, or we're doing physics. Now, to the left of the spectrum is ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. Now, we don't want to ever get be exposed to gamma rays, not too many X-rays, because that can actually kill us. Um, and then to the right of our visible spectrum, you have the infrared and then you have radio waves. So these are all a part of the same system. And we only are only able to see a certain uh, slice of that. Now, different species are able to see different slices of the electromagnetic spectrum. Some species can see uh uh, ultraviolet, and some species can see infrared. Some can see various colors and not other colors. Um, we're all made up and we have different capacities, uh, each species in each human. Now, when we start mixing colors, uh, we, we mix pure colors, and that's called the hues. And then we can also what we call tint them. We can lighten them up until, until we get to white, or we can tone it. Uh, and that would be you know, adding gray to it until we transition to gray or what you're most familiar using it to create shade, adding more and more dark to it. <coughs> All right. And this is another example from white to black at the top. And then, you know, saturated colors are right in the middle going to white and going to the dark. Um, here are different systems, are different, uh, this is one system, but different ways in which we identify colors. So we have the, at the number one, we have the primary colors, the yellow, blue, and red. Uh, number five is the secondary colors, as I mentioned before, orange, green, and purple. And then there are a couple others that I want to point out. The, the, the main, the other thing I want to point out is the warm colors. Number two would be the warm colors. It's part of the spectrum that is all warm colors, which is different than number eight, which is the cool colors. So warm and cool will be dealing a lot with in painting. Warm colors advance and cool colors recede. Those are very important concepts. So when we place, when we're trying to create space, we will place warm colors next to cool all the time, or even a, when we're creating form around the portrait. The other thing I want to make mention of is complementary colors. Those are colors that are on the opposite side of the color wheel, and they're in high contrast with these, each other. So we have purple and yellow, and we would have green and red uh, are opposites each other. Oh, you can do it over here. Uh, green, uh, let's see here. Green and red, yellow and purple, and orange and blue would be uh, complementary colors. We'll be talking about these again and again and again. So I want to show you these and how colors can be really powerful and how they can fool the eye. So we can use colors and how we use them. We can make one color look like they're two by the context. Uh, we can take this one green color and we can make it look a little bit bluer, a little bit greener, or a little darker, or a little lighter. Same thing with this fuchsia color. What the surrounding color does to it will change it. So it'll look like they're two separate colors. This actually looks like it's more vibrant than this color. Here we can take, we can do then just the opposite. We can take two completely different colors and make them look like they're the same color based on their context. Same thing here two completely different colors and making them look like they're this very much the same. 
Um, we can shift them by hue, and that means light and dark, so we can make one look darker than the other. We can shift the value. Um, that would be, you know, whether one's grayed out or something. Or the saturation. We can shift the saturation. We can play optical illusions by the way in which we, we create twists and the little pixels of, of colors. Uh, here is a good example just to how the box is arranged. It looks like it's spiraling out, out, but literally these are concentric circles. If you follow them through, they are concentric circles. They never spiral out. They're, they're concentric, but it looks like they spiral out. Here, using high contrast uh, colors, again, it makes these circular shapes look like they're, they're rotating. Here, we have a checkerboard, and we know that there are the whites and the gray or the black uh, um, places. And, but because we have a shadow going over the checkerboard, one of the things that we'll recognize is that if you were to create a pathway between them is that the that the white in the shadow is the same gray as the as the gray outside the shadow so you everything is relative and you're going to get more and more familiar with uh painting and being in and being relative to its surroundings you can play around with size based on color and size of of its surrounding context uh you can give a sense that something's teetering. These are all very uh, parallel lines. Every line is parallel to each other. Based on its surroundings, you can make them look like they're on angles. So this makes it look like there's ripples, like it's a flag, but they're perfectly straight. Now, I want to talk really quickly about colors and emotions. We associate, we have emotions, and we also culturally associate emotions with colors. Uh, red is obviously, you know, we recognize as passion or anger. Pink is often with love or something that's soft. Yellow is often associated with wisdom and knowledge. Orange with humor, energy. Uh, green is kind of healing and, and soothing. Blue is often associated with faith or spirituality. Purple is obviously erotic or uh, royalty or nobility. Um, brown is often associated with materialistic sensations or really the earthy tones. Black is associated with power and sophistication. White with protection and love. Uh, silver is with riches and glamour. Same thing with gold is precious and riches. So we always have, we have all these different associates and they, 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 they vary depending on what culture you're from. They can have somewhat similar. Now there's a video in this presentation that I really, really encourage you to watch. It's short. And what it does is it goes through and shows you how uh, filmmakers use color palettes, different palettes, to express a certain emotion, to, to, to move the story forward. So that one of the characters in story is the color palette in, in the, uh, on the screen. And here are some examples. We got Finding Nemo where you have the purples and blues, very light colors, saturated. The Life of Pi, you have a lot of dark and silvery colors along with a few warm reds. Uh, 2001 Space Odyssey is very famous. You know, this is almost 50 years ago and the color is spectacular um, and the design is spectacular. Um, Ocean's Lemon having these contrasting hot colors, almost passionate. Uh, Black Hawk Down uh, plays around with this really probably one of the most uh, obvious conventions in film and that's in action films they often use dark blues and oranges warms and cools uh to create high contrast action uh the dark night again high contrast i don't even know what film this is 
uh, but it's it all's within. Here's a good example of analogous colors. They're all within one color. It's actually more of uh, what we call monochromatic. They're all within one color from light to dark. So they're monochromatic. And I'm going to show you uh, Bisa Butler is an artist that works in quilts and she cuts out patterns and makes patterns and then patches these things together to create portraitures. Uh, and she'll see that she uses lots of different color combinations, but often a high contrast color, like greens and reds, uh, purples and oranges, uh, purples and yellows, blues and oranges, reds and greens. And you can see how she patches these together to, to, to construct a portrait. So that is it. And here there will be a demonstration. Uh, this video will be sitting in this in this presentation. I encourage you to, to work uh, diligently. I'm going to give you right now a quick demo of the kinds of of the project that we're doing. So we have uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do um, triangles that will have in two linear passage in a kind of a circular form that will start to paint the darker areas on the in, inside and the lighter areas on the outside. Um, and they'll all be in analogous colors. So what you'll start is whether with a pencil or a pen, I'm gonna try this in pen, we'll see what it's like. And you're just gonna do just like we've done in class, as uh, so you're gonna start making triangles, make them big enough that you can actually paint in them. Um, see if you can see this and variate the size and the shape just keep going around And you want them to come together. So now you've done one circle around of, of triangles, got a kind of a, a circular form or an amoeba type form. And then you're going to connect the tips of the triangles. Oops. Oh, my pen has run out. The reason pen works well is that it doesn't smear, but you have to be perfect. You can't, you can't erase. And I'm having some problems with the drawing. All right. So now I've done one circle around, I've closed them off. And now I want to do another circle around, uh, around the, Oh man, Let's see if I can find another pen, I don't know. Again, you want to change the size of each one. but you don't want to get too small. And you can actually go off the page if you want. All right, so here we now want to do is close those off, connect them, the tips. all the way around and some of it goes off and so you're going to end up with something like this or something like that and then you'll start painting and i want you to paint the light colors on the outside and these are all analogous to greens 
uh, all the light colors on the light outside and the darker colors on the inside of the ring, darker in the grays, uh, darker in the grays, and the lighter in the saturated colors on the outside. And you can use, in my case, I got to start with a green or, uh, you know, if you've got other colors from another color kit, you can include those. If you've got different kinds of greens, oops, if you've got different kinds of greens, um, and then you got black and white or even yellows. Oops, you got greens and yellows here. Let's see here. Different types of greens and yellows. Uh, even uh, different kinds of blues to mix with the uh, the greens. And you've got an example right here of me mixing them up to make this up. So you'll start with a color and then you'll mix into the next color. And you can keep going around by mixing more and more colors into each other. Uh, so you don't have to lose a color. So once you've mixed one color, you can use that to mix the next color and then the next and then the next. Or you can add more white or you can add some black or you can add more yellow to the green or blue to the blue or a different type of turquoise uh, and keep playing around until you move it all the way around. And that's it. So uh, for today, I just want you to uh finish up doing the drawing you don't have to begin the paint so get out your card and make a drawing of triangles that you're going to work on and then when we come back together i'll work with you to begin to do the mixing and uh show you a demonstration of mixing like here and get yourself painting and so you should be able to do this in a day uh, and so i hope you enjoy yourselves uh stay Get out and shovel and have some fun in the snow also. And that's it, guys. Enjoy yourselves.